one was about what Octoprint does. Uh, this is part two, what it takes to successfully implement Octoprint. We're going to start with the hardware. You're going to, of course, need a Raspberry Pi 3. And you would think uh, with the Pi 4s out that uh, you could get some decent pricing on a Pi 3. So I doubt you're going to do as well as I did because my son gave me one for Christmas about three years ago. And it sat on a shelf all this time until I finally found a worthwhile project for it. And then my other son gave me another one. And you're going to want a camera. And I've got this Noir V2. So it's a good low light camera. And it's easy for me to recommend it because you guessed it, it was given to me. Now, I'm a pretty frugal guy, so if I was buying one for myself, I would probably be tempted to go for one of those $12 ones. They're Pi compatible, but uh, I've never tried them, so I can't vouch for them. Next, you're going to want the 3.5 inch LCD screen. And there, my luck ran out. I actually had to spring for that. Uh, I bought it a couple years ago, and I did better than that price. And um, if you're in no rush, like I've got another one coming on the slow boat from China that I picked up on AliExpress, and you save a few bucks. But uh, that's a two-month wait, so uh, maybe uh, that saving ain't worth it. The Raspberry Pi 3 has a rep for being very fussy about its voltage requirements. So if it ever detects uh, 4.63 volts or less for the briefest of time, it may continue to run but uh, it may not be stable and on a project like this where we don't want it to fail through very long prints you can't have under voltage detection one of the reasons i want that lcd screen is to make sure that that message uh, doesn't show up now they recommend 2.5 amps or more and they have these chargers like this that are specifically recommended for the pi 3. Uh, no good I've gotten under voltage uh, detection messages with these. For this project, and I had this laying around, it was gifted to me, I've settled on this Qualcomm 3.0 quick charge. Now, not that the Pi 3 can make full use of the quick charge feature, but this charger right at the output gives you 5.4 volts. And even though there might be a little bit of voltage drop as it goes across the cable at the micro USB where it plugs into the Pi 3 you know you still got lots of voltage. How do you know if you have the right charger? You will not get the under voltage detection message. You'll need a micro SD card and I would not do any Raspberry Pi project without having a card that has that A1 designation on it. Not enough that it's just a class 10 these A1s are meant to run applications and there's a huge difference in performance by making sure that the card has that. And the whole concept behind Raspberry Pi 3 projects is that you download an OS image, you put the card in an adapter, you get an etcher and you etch the image onto the card in preparation for its first run. Go to octoprint.org and there you will find their download page and you will find the file for the Octopi OS. So the project is Octoprint and the operating system on the Pi 3 is Octopi. Feel free to support Gina if you like. She's the force behind that project. Install Bellina Etcher on your computer and etch that image onto the micro SD card. If you find that I perhaps went a little bit too quick over this step, I invite you to watch the beginning of gadgets number 83, where I go into it into quite a bit more detail. Normally after etching an image like that, you're ready to take the micro SD card and put it in the Raspberry Pi for its very first run. We're gonna do that, but first we're going to uh, edit one of the files. So let's go to the file explorer. Um, we're going to go to the root directory of the boot. And we're looking for this file, octopi-wpa-supplicant.tech. Open that file with a plain text editor like Notepad. This is so that we're going to be able to put our credentials for the network. 
so that on the first boot, uh, we're going to have network access for the Pi 3. Most of us use WPA as our network security, right? So the syntax here is that the hashtag means a comment and the removal of a hashtag makes the line active. So we're going to be removing these four hashtags. This guy. This one. This one. And this one. And we do not remove any of the spaces. We just remove those four hashtags. We put the name of our Wi-Fi connection here. And we put our secret squirrel code here and we leave the quotation marks. Once that's done you scroll to the bottom of the page. So we have to enter our country and as a default you'll see that the hashtag was removed for the United Kingdom making it the active one. So let's insert a hashtag there and for me here in Canada I'm going to delete the hashtag beside my country. We're ready to exit and save the file. And now we can remove the SD card and put it in the Raspberry Pi. You'll need a USB keyboard for this. Keyboard is plugged into the USB. Power supply is being fed through the micro USB. The Micro SD card is plugged in. If you have a camera, it's a good time to have the ribbon plugged onto the board. It's going to get recognized on the first boot. You can have the three and a half inch LCD screen on top of the GPIO. It's not going to get recognized anytime soon. That's going to come later. So right now we're going to be working off the HDMI output. This goes to your big screen TV, whatever you've got for an HDMI source. So that I'm going to be able to bring you these clear screenshots. I've got this HDMI video capture, which is USB to HDMI. We're all connected. Let's plug in the Pi 3 for the first boot. And remember that we're not using the LCD screen here. We're still on HDMI output to an HDMI monitor. The Octopi login default is Pi. And the default password is Raspberry. And there, we're logged in. Let's unplug the Pi. Let's reboot. Again, Pi is a login, Raspberry is a default password, and we have our system prompt. We're going to try to get our 3.5 inch LCD to run, and we're going to be typing in these command lines one at a time here. I probably got the fastest two finger keyboarding in the north, but here I take my time. First line git clone https colon double slash github dot com slash wave share 
slash lcd dash show dot git. I made a mistake between the dot com period wave share, that period is supposed to be a slash. I'm going to retype it and I'm not going to edit this. I want to show you, first of all, that it's easy to make a mistake and that it's also just easy to correct it. You just redo the line until it's accepted. Let's do it again. Git clone. HTTPS GitHub dot com slash WaveShare slash LCD dash show dot git. Got it this time. And I got my command prompt again, ready for the next line. Next line is CD, which is change directory, right? CD, LCD, dash show, slash. And you'll notice that we now have changed the directory. Next line, chmod plus x lcd 35 dash show space dot slash lcd 35 dash show. Got that one right. This one's tricky. There's a space here. Space period slash LCD 35 dash show. Space period slash LCD 35 dash show enter. So here's asking for the password. This is normal. So default password raspberry enter. Do you want to continue? Yeah. Just type Y. Enter. Okay. And now Let's reboot. Okay, cool. So we're back in. And the good news is that we now have 3.5 inch LCD support. Great. Bad news is that for some reason, the camera that was originally working is now turned off. So we have to turn it back on. We're going to enter a sudo command to end up in the config file. sudo raspi dash config enter. It's going to ask for a password again. raspberry default password. Now we're in the config thing. We have a bunch of choices. 
we're going to choose uh, option number five, which is the interfacing option. And we're going to choose to enable the camera, which is the top line, enter. Would you like the camera interface enable? Yes, enter. The camera interface is enabled. Okay, go down. Finish, enter to exit out of here and we can unplug the Pi. From here, the installation is complete. We can go to the printer. With this, we have LCD support, camera support, Octoprint support, it's all in here. Let's head out to the printer. And now I'm going to show you what is probably the most important part of this tutorial, the most important part of this project. And it is this USB to USB connection. It is critical on two fronts. Look at this display is turned on, yet the power supply on the printer isn't. The Raspberry Pi 3 is backfeeding through the USB to the motherboard of the printer. Not good. And that under voltage detection that I was telling you about that the Raspberry Pi 3 is uh, susceptible to is going to be a lot more so if it has to power through here. So what some people have done to rectify this is that they slip a small piece of electrical tape to cover up the 5 volt pin here. Here's the gadgets playlist method. A 5 volt pin is embedded in that plastic base, so the pick is to lift it off of there. The tweezers are to give it a 90 degree twist to orientate it so that the needle nose pliers get a better grip of it. Then hang on to the USB plug and pull for all it's worth and you'll yank that pin out of there. And now the printer display does not turn on unless the power supply to the printer itself is on. And second, is a serial connection of this cable. Very, very fussy. So hopefully the cable is well shielded. Adding a ferrite choke is a must. And you cannot introduce any EMI sources nearby. Let me show you. Just having this small LED lamp here nearby was enough interference to prevent this 15 hour print from completing, leaving you with this type of frustration. Critical. So I got rid of this, of course, and I went to a 40 watt incandescent bulb in here. And it just goes to show just how uh, sensitive that USB to USB connection is. Go to your browser. Type in uh, the URL is uh, octoprint.local and it will take you to the IP address of this and you get the benefits that were shown in part one. It's that easy. Take care guys.